Do you have engine vibration that you can't seem to get rid of on your Gen 1 Yamaha FJR 1300? Hello, today I'm working on my Yamaha 05 FJR 1300. I bought this bike about a year and a half ago and it had some vibration in the handlebars and in the foot pegs. Um, I didn't know the maintenance on this bike, so I figured I had to go through most of the bike and do all the surface maintenance. Um, I did do a throttle body sink. I did, you know, full lubrication, uh, frame lubrication, uh, the uh, valve adjustments. I cleaned the throttle body. Um, I did all the lubrication points in the front and back suspension, um, the drivetrain, uh, pretty much everything on the bike. Um, I did also have a slight miss in the engine. Um, that miss was uh, a coil and um, wire. Um, I decided at that point not to change the wire uh, because the cost of the coil from Yamaha was fairly expensive and um, decided to go with coil unplug instead conversion. Uh, the conversion actually worked out really well, um, but it did smooth out the engine, but it didn't do anything for the vibration. Uh, the throttle body sink also didn't do anything for the, the vibration. Um, one of the things that I did note was number four cylinder was had to be cranked all the way to closed, and some of the other uh, cylinders all had to weren't really where they should be. Uh, they should be somewhere between three quarter and one turn out. And some of them were two turns. Some of them was like a half a turn uh, and the one was closed. So I kind of figured that maybe the throttle plate screws were messed with. Um, didn't really know that for sure, but um, decided to um, do the, un what do they call it? the unofficial uh, throttle body sink. Um, that didn't help either. It did bring all of the uh, air uh, screw adjustments to approximately the correct position, but uh, it didn't do anything for the vibration. Pretty much the vibration was about the same. Um, at some point after reading through the service manual, uh, I did notice that there was also a um, counterbalancer adjustment on the engine. Um, I had been through pretty much everything on the bike, uh, so, um, other than stripping down the engine and checking for journals, bearings, things of that nature. Um, and I adjusted the front, um, counterbalancer and lo and behold, uh, it, I got about a 40% improvement in the, uh, engine vibration. So before I had engine vibration at around 3k, uh, it, kind of felt like a growl, like as you're pulling away, you're like, oh, type of growl. Um, then at around 4K to 4.5K and higher, um, I had varying degrees of vibration at those points. Uh, when I did the front counterbalancer adjustment, um, the 3K growl went away completely. The um, 4K was much smoother and I'm still getting vibration above 4K to uh, past 5K. Um, but I would say overall it was about a 40% improvement in the vibration. Um, this video, what I wanna do is adjust the rear counterbalancer. However, um, that counterbalancer is underneath the throttle body. Uh, so that means uh, pulling the throttle body off the bike um, to do that adjustment. Um, I'm going to do, redo the front counterbalancer and I'm going to do the rear counterbalancer. At the same time, I'm going to clean, do a thorough cleaning of the throttle body. I'm going to replace all the seals on the injectors and clean the ends of the injectors with cleaner. Um, let's see, what else was I going to do? Um, oh yes, I also have a slight leak on the water uh, 
there's a metal pipe that goes between the thermostat and the top of the engine uh, and they had o-rings on them um, when i went to do the valve job i had ordered the o-rings but uh, the o-rings got back ordered so i wound up using hardware store o-rings um, that uh, lasted about a year but they're leaking now so i need to replace them um, so uh, let's get into repairing the bike Okay, first thing we need to do is remove the seat and any accessories. So I'm gonna pull the tank bag off, set it aside on a blanket. Okay, remove the seats. And remove any Thing you have stored in, under the seat. It's a good idea to set up a, a blanket to the side so you have a place that you can set things down without scratching them. Um, I'm going to take the side panels off and I have a uh, Allen head wrench here with the adapter to a socket driver um, you can use a regular allen wrench if you'd like um, they're all finger tight so it really doesn't make any difference and it's best to put these into some type of container okay now we're going to pull out the plastics um, there's little push pin clips uh, there's two of them on the plastic kind of pull on the center pin and they pull out these are not the originals um, the originals I believe have the little push pin in the middle that you push in and uh, you can then slide the clip out these are a aftermarket uh, uh, clip that you can get from any automotive store. Okay, removal of gray panel. There's one more push pin underneath the bottom side, the pull out. Okay. And this panel slides forward and out. Okay, we're going to now remove the back bolts in the tank. We're using a 12 millimeter box on one side, and I'm using a 12 meter, millimeter socket on the other. And then hold the wrench and loosen. I won't remove the bolt completely because I got to uh, tilt up the tank and I also had to remove the fuel line and some other vacuum lines. We have placed a towel over top of the gas tank uh, so we don't scratch anything. Um, we're going to take these two bolts out here which hold the front of the gas tank and we are using a 10 millimeter socket uh, with a long extension. Just loosen them first, take the wrench off and just work them out using your hand. Okay, we're now going to lift the tank. I have this stick which I made which 
has a 45 degree cut on one end uh, with a nail stuck in it and a flat cut on the other end with a nail stuck in it. Uh, I'm going to lift carefully. I'm going to stick the one end into the hole. Okay, I'm going to continue lifting, checking the wires, make sure nothing's being pulled. Keep going up. And there we go. All right, and lift and put it through the second hole. Now I can let go. Okay, now we're going to remove the wires. Um, there's a little push pin on the one side of the connector. Kind of push it in and wiggle it off. That wasn't too bad. Same thing for the second one. There's a little push tab on this side. Pull. There we go. Okay, move the wire to the side. Okay, next I'm going to be removing the vacuum line and the fuel hose. We have the one fuel return line off. Um, we're now going to take the fuel uh, line off. There's a little safety clip here that kind of snaps over and you just pull it off. Okay. And you slowly pull this off, remembering to keep a plastic little container uh, to empty any fuel into. And keep a rag also on hand. Kind of had to press the button and pull up slowly. Okay, and bring your rag over and bring it over to, and of course there was nothing, and there's a few drops to drain. All right, now we can finish removing the lower bolt, holding the nut on the other side, Use the nut, and Lift up slightly on the gas tank and slide the bolt out. Okay, now we want to move this gas tank to our safe area. So remove this stand, put it aside. Grab the front and back, lifting straight up, making sure all the cables are loose. Come forward and set it down. Okay, next we want to remove the mounting plate for the for the gas tank. There are four bolts holding this on as well as two bolts. Take the outer four bolts off first. Okay, now we need to remove the connector from the uh, sensor. Okay. Now we need to remove the toolbox. Put 
this in first. And walk them out by hand. Okay, we also need to remove a screw from the bottom of the tray with a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, the tray should be loose and it's attached to this piece here. Okay, now use a Phillips screwdriver to loosen these little plastic push screws. They kind of have a Phillips head and they when you turn them counterclockwise they kind of pop up you pull out and they slide out of the hole We now have to remove the ECU harness from the ECU. There is a little clip here that you squeeze and pull straight out. We also need to remove two Phillips head screws that are at the back side of the pull box. Try not to drop them through the frame like I just did. Okay, you can now remove the tool tray. We're also going to remove this air hose and this air hose. Using pliers here to squeeze the clamp, move it forward, and slide the hose off. Maybe the clamp. Okay, and use your fingers to kind of pull that down. And you should be able to slide that right off. Might need a little screwdriver. There we go. We're now going to loosen the clamps on all four intake boots using this torque screwdriver that's on a socket driver um, and using a piece of tape to keep it from coming out and dropping in the engine. Uh, the first one is coming from the side, which we can loosen up here. I would turn it about eight to ten turns out. You don't want to go too far because then the screw will pop out of the clamp. Repeat for the other three cylinders. To remove the clamp on the second cylinder, I need to remove the sensor. Now you can remove the clamp. We need to remove this air cleaner with the Phillips head screwdriver. And there are four screws I can use around it. Ok, 
Okay, we're now going to remove these two connectors here. Um, use a small little screwdriver. Go underneath the tab here and kind of lift up and pull them apart. And on the other one, same procedure. Little tab, lift up and pull apart. Okay, let's now try to lift, pull back on the air box and lift. Being taken clear of all the wires and kind of work it out. There we are. And should be able to lift straight up from the back. Okay, there is a hose underneath here somewhere. It is a bit of a tight fit, but with a little bit of finagling, it will come out. There's a silver bolt right there that I have the flashlight on. That is the lock for the rear counterbalancer. Um, and the adjustment is right alongside of it. Um, as you can see, my throttle bodies are very dirty. And that adjustment is lined up with the side of the fairing so the right fairing will have to come off as well as the left fairing will have to come off in order to do the balancer on the front of the engine. Now we want to loosen the four clamps holding the front of the throttle bodies with the same procedure we did on the boots for the air box. We also want to disconnect this plug right here. Now we want to work the throttle bodies out of the boots by gently rocking and pulling and a slowly pop out. There we go. Okay, you also want to disconnect this plug here. Now we want to loosen the throttle cables using a 10 millimeter open end wrench. Okay, these cables should slide out of their retainer once they are fully loosened. Now you're gonna to wanna to remove the cables from the throttle body by rotating the throttle plates around and using a little hook to push uh, the end of the cable off the can. Okay, we now got the one cable loose. Now you want to gently rotate the throttle body up and over uh, while maneuvering these two water hoses around the first uh, throttle body inlet. Uh, this will now expose the front of the cam so we can get the throttle cable off. Okay, we now have the other throttle cable free and we'll just push them up and out of the way. Okay, now we should be free. There's a cable on the bottom side. That is the throttle adjustment cable. We need to slide that off. Okay, and you now want to dump the excess fuel into a container. At this point, we probably want to stick some rags, or I'm using a paper towel, into the inlet of the engine, carefully not bumping any dirt into it. Uh, we just want to keep everything clean. OK, 
Okay, we're going to remove the bearing with these three bolts and this bottom bolt, leaving the center bolt on for now. Also need to remove the bolt on the bottom of the fairing. There's one bolt down here. There are three screws, one low here, one up high, and one toward the middle. It's right there. There's also a Phillips push pin that has to come out. And you put a shorty screwdriver in there, rotate it counterclockwise, pull the pin out, and pull the piece of plastic out. So you hear this here. There's also two screws on the front of the fairing. Okay, the fairing should now separate. Okay, we're now going to remove the center screw. Holding on to the plastic to make sure it doesn't drop. Set your screws down, slide it outward, separate it from the plastics, piece of stone, slide it out carefully. Okay, removing the three screws from the front plastic. It's also a push pin down here, right there, uh, where the light is. That holds the front black plastic. Now remove the push pin. Inside, push in on the center. Should snap, and then should be able to pull it out the pin and the plastic. Okay, we're going to remove the left fairing by removing these three screws and the one screw down here in the bottom. Okay, now we're going to remove the final screw. down and carefully hook and slide it away. Okay, now I'm going to loosen the radiator cap. Not going to take it completely off. I just want to relieve the pressure so that I can drain some of the fluid. Okay, so now we need to loosen the bolt on the water pump to drain some of the coolant from the system. We only need to go below the thermostat. So I'm not going to drain all of it. Let's see how it goes. Okay, with a towel under the far side of the throttle body, we want to lift the throttle body and loosen the two clamps on the two hoses. Have a little container ready um, in case there's any fluid and let's push off those hoses. Come on, do it. Surprise, I thought I was gonna get some water, didn't. Okay, now our throttle body should be free and clear. Also, verify that your engine mounts are torqued to specifications. Okay, here 
lit up is the front counterbalancer adjustment uh, on the front of the engine. Um, there's a little line that goes straight down and then there's little divided lines on the collar that's around the shaft. Um, what you want to do is scribe the original position. I have a little metal scribe that I'm going to use to scribe its original position so we know exactly where it was. Now we're going to adjust the front calibouncer. I'm going to mark the original position with this little hook and I'm just going to scribe it right where that line is and make a mark in it right there. Okay, now we're going to take our eight millimeter and we're going to loosen it. Okay, now I'm going to hold a little pressure counterclockwise and continue to loosen. Okay, now we're going to turn counterclockwise until it tightens, until it just touches, and then I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure and I'm going to look at the position and now I'm going to move it counterclockwise by exactly one lines from its the position we just noted and now I'm going to put it in a tight direction come on tighten it okay and continue to tighten Now we're going to torque it to 88 inch pounds. There we go. Next, we're going to work on the rear cow bouncer. We're going to take a scribe and scribe the original position. Look through the side and line up your with the pointer and scribe a line. Now we're gonna loosen the pinch bolt. Okay. Apply counterclockwise pressure finish loosening it okay turn it counterclockwise until it just has pressure and give it a little bit more pressure and note the position okay now turn it clockwise one uh, two line positions hold it in that position and tighten your pinch bolt Finish tightening the pinch bolt. Tighten the pinch bolt to 88 inch pounds. Verify that you're exactly two lines clockwise from the counterclockwise position. 